Good morning, everybody. Lots of sprouting going on. Good news, bad news. And uh, I want to start out by saying thank you for letting me know that the seeds arrived safely. And I could feel the excitement about the selection. So enjoy. If there's anything I could do to help with some of the varieties that you're not familiar with, just let me know. If your uh, search doesn't turn up too much on the on the Google, so we have plenty of flowering going on and fruit setting. I ran into a slight bit of problems with the uh, the some of the tomato varieties. I picked up a couple uh, heirloom starts at a local feed store and. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it was a septoria disease. So I ended up ripping out tomato plants by the roots. I don't try to control disease. I have way too much going on here. My uh, best uh, defense for the disease is to just get it at the very beginning, not let it spread. So I rip up the plants now. Tomato diseases very rarely kill the plant, but when you're doing seed production, it's important that everything on the property be healthy. Beautiful. I am so thrilled about this. Such, you know, tiny growth on this second year Cal Wonder uh, Sweet Bell Pepper and a nice flowering going on. Sam uh, has a liking for asparagus and uh, Swiss chard. So the damage to the Swiss chard plant isn't bugs. That's the dog chewing on it. So I'll be uh, able to eat some of this. A couple leaves here and there off of every plant. We're starting to get the second round of strawberries coming in and flowers on the lettuce seed heads. I haven't even uh, I haven't even sifted all of the seeds from last year's lettuce. We had a thousand heads on the property to get a really good seed stock. Gorgeous baby figs everywhere. The problem with the fig is as soon as they start to go ripe, the squirrels the squirrels are all over them. That, that and uh, the sunflowers, they really love the sunflowers. Not too much sprouting going on here between the dogs and the lack of consistent watering, but it's okay because I have plenty of the wildflowers growing elsewhere. And then here's a huge cluster. I started to thin out the wildflowers and put a whole bunch of the marigolds along that pine straw. I'm still trying to get lettuce here even in the warm weather. So I've picked shady spots for that. Gorgeous, gorgeous Swiss chard. I had no idea how it was gonna do here, but it's very happy. It's plugged in some basil, some of the broccoli rob sprouts and uh, and lots of the wildflowers, even some arugula up here and endive. There's more sprouting pots and another bed. This is the dinosaur kale and basil, arugula, lots and lots of uh, marigolds. I don't know if I'd mentioned this before, but marigold does make a really good tea. It's a healing tea. I totally blanked on the fact that I put the ginger root here and planted cilantro right on top of it. I don't think it's going to hurt it, but uh, tonight I'll go ahead and everywhere I see those uh, ginger sprouts coming up, I'll go ahead and, and move that cilantro. Nice growth on the watermelon. Should have been thinned. You know, there, there should be 
you know, some space in between those plants. So I'll pick the two smallest ones and spread them out. I've got lots of room here yet. Pulled a lot of the lettuce and I'm using part of the uh, siding. Put it over the top of this cage to block out the intense sun between around 11 and 3. So they get the morning sun and they get the afternoon sun. And hopefully I'll be able to eat some more lettuce. <laughs> I love this. That's the giant golden amaranth and the Florence fennel and some wildflowers in front of it. I have the sprinkler system going on back there. As you can see, I'm working slowly but surely. There are some thin spots here. Lots, lots more to do. I got us uh, some good luck and, and had some cool weather this week, both night and day. Every variety of tomato is, uh, is flowering and looking good, except for the few casualties. Crazy growth on the beans. Beans like really, really rich soil and, you know, they'll do great for you sunny spot, warm temperatures. The Egyptian walking onions in both places are absolutely perfect and very uh, good eats. I've been pulling a couple here and there and there's some flowering on the potatoes. There are some of the Siamese uh, mix that I left behind, crust behind that. And I'm eating a couple baby uh, fresh pea pods in the salad. My second round of the French breakfast is producing in the back garden. Also adding that to the, the nightly salads. So I have another little shady area. And up here is the dill, which gets the most sun. But back here is cilantro, more lettuce, and some of the volunteer broccoli rob. As soon as I see the broccoli rob uh, producing its, its heads, I'll go ahead and cut it back. I have plenty of that for sprouting seeds and for growing. Quick work of this. I'm hoping that everything goes well and uh, I have some money coming in to get another few piles for the season. But yeah, wow, just like that I could, I could go through. And I didn't even cover the ground as, as much as I wanted to. Lemon apples starting on their sixth and eighth leaf. Good growth there. Broccoli raw mixed in with the uh, arugula and cress. Still have to pull some of that out. That'll be added to some to some dinners. I put in a bed of uh, the love lies bleeding back there. It took a little bit of a hit with the sun, but the it'll recover as it grows. Tiny little patch of rosemary and the wildflowers and squash. Are, are doing nicely here. The squash I had moved around in the garden. I had said earlier back there that, you know, that was way too many mounds. It was just used as a nursery and they'd have to be moved. And I'm happy to report that even though the squash plants were quite large, I didn't suffer any uh, casualties in any of the transplants with the exception of a couple of the arugula. The bed uh, dried out. So the lettuce, it's getting too intense back here in this big bed. So the lettuce at the end didn't do anything. A lot of it died and it was just an experiment. But the lettuce out in the back of the trailer is doing fabulous because that's the shade spot. And the experiment, the submerged experiment's doing really well. 
So there's shamrock, uh, squash, Hopi squash, and uh, the cheerman is over here. I decided to utilize this space even though I'm not going to be able to get to uh, getting this compost burned or however to get rid of all of this massive quantity of debris. The squash put here will get enough sun but they won't take up any garden space because I'll direct them back to covering the debris. Bachelor buttons and there's a Thai edible gourd. I did some research on the Thai edibles. They said that they're really good in stir fries, but you pick the, the, the uh, gourds really young. And that was my mistake as I was letting them go and then I was trying to prepare them and it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that good. It doesn't have that much flavor. Good store of, uh, of water. It's a very, it's a very uh, liquidy kind of squash, not a drier squash like the winter squash can be. Beautiful uh, lemon apple growth. And I've been keeping up with the hand pollination in the morning. I pulled that guy, he started to flower and he just isn't up to par. So I, I had to say, my give my apologies to him and, and kill him. But oh, we're getting a little wet. But I wanted to show you that the fruit is staying on the vine. This is the early Russian cucumber. Hand pollination taking place every morning. I'm gonna wipe that camera lens off. Lots of flowering going on. Good growth. Starting to see some sprouting on the direct sow of the Cal Wonder and every single one of the tobacco plants took. Transplanting is going really well. I've explained this before, but I'll reiterate that I really try to honor the plant and only transplant after it's been thoroughly watered and go into the early evening hours. It gives it a chance to get at least some footing with those roots in before it gets pelted the next day. And I'll even, if it's gonna be a really intense day, I'll even provide a little shelter, a little shade. I got away with uh, transplanting those big squash out of the pot too this way. Just make a little tent and shelter it from the sun for about, you know, two, three, four days, depending on the variety and depending on how big. This is interesting. I put in the, uh, the emerald apple tomato. This is my first year with them. Tomatoes, there is mixed information on tomatoes of whether they cross or not. And I'll tell you from years of experience, I've grown many varieties of tomatoes right next to each other without any crossing. I've heard if they do cross that in the next generation they go back to their original original type. And you don't have to worry about hand pollinating a tomato or a sweet bell pepper. They are perfect flower, they pollinate themselves. And if your plants aren't setting fruit, it could be because of uh, too cool a temperature, too warm of a temperature. A lot of people don't realize that, that when it starts to get into the mid 70s and high 70s for nighttime temperatures, tomatoes typically will not set their fruit. This was, uh, I've never direct sowed uh, tomato seeds and I decided to do that and they're, they're doing well. Tomato steaks. I've been out a couple times getting supplies and I totally blanked on them, but thank goodness everybody's still standing tall and happy. And here is, um, this is a, a perfect example of what the basil is going to look like. That is the beginning of a bolt for a basil. Now, if you want to attract the flower, uh, the pollinators, leave it go to flower. 
but if you want a big bushy plant and you're more interested in in leaf production then pinch those off and this will start getting that everywhere so the more you pinch the more you will have to pinch until you decide to let it go to seed it's edible when it is flowering and going to seed and the flowers are also edible this guy because he's a tiny specimen I'm gonna let this one go to flower and seed early just to help my pollinators have something to do but this one is just starting to go and see the size of this cinnamon basil he's gorgeous so all you need to do is take your fingertips and right where that starts just pinch it off doesn't hurt the plant it'll force more branches to come out and this thing will get enormous and bushy and produce way more way more basil leaves for you to enjoy and this is a sweet basil light stemmed uh, just the, the classic sweet basil and uh, oh Michael's leaving I'll be back with more later all right have a great day bye